So the first study we did was NSL cysteine in schizophrenia. It was a double-blind, placebo-controlled study, sample size of 140, which is a, a reasonable size for an investigator-initiated study. Industry would say that it's too small, and they're probably right. Uh, and what we found, I'm just going to show you the effect sizes. We, sh we found moderate effect sizes, particularly for negative symptoms. Our most interesting finding was a reduction in negative symptoms. So here you can see statistically significant with an effect size of 0.5 for negative symptoms. We didn't see any signal for positive symptoms. It didn't reduce hallucinations and delusions, but it reduced negative symptoms. There's also a reduction in PANS total and PANS general. The other thing that went down was akathisia on the Barnes akathisia rating scale. So that was a statistical fi statistically significant finding. Um, we didn't have good measures of depression in the study, which was a design error. It's just a mistake we made. But we got feedback from participants that they just felt better. And amongst other things, this prompted us to start looking at mood disorders. But your mother would have told you, never believe the results of a single study. Right? Uh, a single study is highly likely to be a false positive. And whenever you get a weird finding of a weird compound that you wouldn't expect that comes out of the blue, you have to wait for independent replication. And so we were delighted when, uh, at the end, uh, when one year ago, a group replicated our findings. So they again used the same dose. They added on to, to risperidone. And they found superiority of NAC versus placebo on negative symptoms, but they found no effect on positive symptoms. So that's always very reassuring to us. Um, Ajit's last slide was uh, one study, case reports are not much chop. One study is interesting, replication's important, meta-analysis is better. Um, so as clinicians, you really want very good, solid evidence. So you know, two studies is good. It'll be nice when, it's rep when again, you get more replication. Uh, and I'm aware that other studies are being done. So the next study we did was in bipolar disorder. And we were surprised to find large effect sizes. So as I said, we found effect sizes in the moderate range, 0.4 to 0.5 in schizophrenia. In bipolar disorder, we found large effect sizes, 0.8 to 1, which are really surprisingly large. Um, and this was across the range of bipolar symptoms, from depression to functioning to quality of life. Uh, so in, in all of these, we saw statistical significance of inestyle cysteine. Sorry? It was a much smaller study. We only had 74 individuals. Uh, and I'm also going to tell you that this has not yet been replicated by anybody, although we are in the process of finishing a replication study. But again, you'd want this to be replicated by other people before you really believe anything. We then went on to do a maintenance study. Now, the holy grail in bipolar disorder is maintenance. You want a treatment that not only is going to get you well, but is going to keep you well. So we followed the cookbook recipe. We got Joe Calabri's recipe for maintenance studies, and we followed it bit by bit. So what we did is we did uh, an enriched phase uh, where everybody gets an estyl cysteine, an open label. And then we randomized them to staying on SS in acetylcysteine or going to placebo. Now, if you follow the recipe book, what's supposed to happen is that in the open label phase, people get better. And in the double blind phase, the people who stay on active drug stay well, and the people who randomize to placebo relapse. Well, only half of that happened. So what you can see here, in the open label phase, everyone gets better. But in the maintenance phase, this is symptoms, you can see that both groups stayed well. And that's not good for a study design point of view. Here you can see the same thing. When we did a survival curve to the naked biased eyeball, you can see n cysteine looking a little bit better than placebo, but this is entirely statistically non-significant. So we would call this a failed study. It failed to demonstrate that uh, n cysteine had any efficacy in, in maintenance. However, there's one probably very important methodological caveat here. So even though this was a much bigger study, we had, I think, uh, 
160 people in the study. It was, by, it was not enough. The FDA says you need 450 minimum, and the FDA says you need to run for two years. We ran for six months. So we simply just did not have enough relapses in order to detect a statistical signal. So the question in my mind as to whether NAC has any efficacy in maintenance remains open. Yeah? What doses were you using? Same again, one gram twice a day. So what's happened to the four gram, the larger gram studies? There are very few studies that have used four grams. I'll be showing some of them later, but they're not in this disorder. So the whole issue of dose is a very vexed one, and we don't know the answer because there are, there are only two dose-finding studies which use different doses. Both of them are horribly underpowered. They're using 10, 15 people per group. Or both of them suggested that bigger doses than we've used might be better. So they've used doses in the 3, 4 gram. Maybe they're better, but I think the evidence at this stage is at best suggestive that higher doses might be better. But we just don't have enough evidence to be clear about that. So we've done some post hoc analyses of this study. Uh, and again, your mother would have warned you, do not trust post hoc analyses. So these are, as the label on the tin would say, serving suggestions, uh, but they, they cannot guarantee results. So we looked at bipolar 2 disorder. Uh, so in the study, we looked at uh, people who remitted. White is yes, gray is no. So if we looked at depression, you can see more remissions in the, depressed, in the NAC than the placebo group. Uh, there was only one in the mania, uh, episode of mania, and if you pool them, it, you can see on aggregate more people in the NAC than the placebo-treated condition benefited from n cysteine. Again, it's preliminary, and I think if you had to be um, rigorous about it, this is at best hypothesis generating. It doesn't prove anything. Similarly, we looked at NAC in mania. Um, we, this was not primarily a study of manic people, so most people were not manic. So in this slide, green is remission, and you can see much more green in the NSL cysteine than the placebo-treated groups. Again, suggestive of an effect in mania, but nobody's ever done an acute mania study. Somebody probably should one day. Uh, there are many studies that need to be done, um, but those studies have not been done yet. The next thing we did, we looked at those people who met criteria for major depression. Now, not everybody in the study met criteria for major depression, but some did. And here, if you look at the Montgomery uh, at endpoint, you can see NAC in blue, mean madras is about 9, mean NAC uh, madras in the placebo group is about 24. That's a big difference, but again, it's post hoc. On the bipolar depression rating scale, again, there was statistically significant. And there was, this was not significant on the young mania rating scale. But nevertheless, which you wouldn't surprise because this is not a manic group. This is a depressive group. So you can see this suggestive of uh, efficacy of n cysteine in major depression in people with bipolar disorder.